Uh, yeah, and I'm not sure uh, stop the shenanigans were the words that Steve Johnson used <laughs> when on, he talked. We're on daytime to TV. Uh, you thank know? you for making that adjustment. So, so for the most part, Nick was okay on Tuesday until he got to his post-match press conference and was asked about that six-figure fine that he drew in Cincinnati, and he gave this answer. The ATP is pretty corrupt anyway, so I'm not fussed about the fine at all, end quote. Well, you can't call the ATP corrupt when you're an ATP player. That's a no-no, and the ATP came out with a statement right away saying that Kyrgios' comments will be assessed under the player major offense provision of the ATP rules, and that Gail Bradshaw, who's the ATP's executive vice president of rules and competition, will investigate and make a determination on next steps, including a possible suspension. Well, after that, Nick quickly backpedaled and issued a statement of his own saying, in part, quote, I would like to clarify my comment around the ATP being corrupt. It was not the correct choice of words. My point and intention was to address what I see as a double standard rather than corruption. My issue is around others doing the same or similar behavior and not getting sanctioned. And so, Paul, let me start with this. What kind of double standard? There's nobody else who behaves like him. Well, I think he's specifically talking about the terminology. I, I think, you know, the challenge is trying to be totally subjective about these evaluations, right? And, and let's be honest, the fact of life is there is a, a term called differentiation, and people are treated differently depending on who they are. Is it fair? Absolutely not. Is it there? Absolutely. And the balance is trying to figure it out. And for Nick, for me, it's very frustrating because he is spectacular. His tennis is absolutely amazing. And the amount of energy that he loses by when he gets off track, that is really distracting. The content of it can be very detrimental. It's absolutely wrong in many instances, as we saw uh, in Cincinnati and other events. And there are times where he's spectacular. So that's why we're always talking about it. We saw it in Washington, D.C., where he engaged so many fans. He was captivating, did so many great things. It's that balance and the volatility of the peaks and the valleys, which makes it so tough. So. The comments in the press conference, that's difficult. The tour, I mean, is that really a major offense? Look, let's go back and see some of the other press conferences, guys. There's some stuff in there that's very close to being uh, well worth analyzed. So I, I think Nick retracted it in, in the uh, content, I guess in the heat of the moment, it came out wrong. But there's so much to chat about. I want to try and do something that I've gotten better at as I've aged, which is to put myself in someone else's shoes and try and look at it from their lens. So let's let's look at it from the Nick Kyrgios lens, who's who's pretty close with a guy named Bernard Tomic, who got nailed with a pretty hefty the fine at Wimbledon this year for not giving his best efforts. And compared to some of the other score lines in that tournament, you can see why Nick would think that maybe there's they're out to get us in a way. You know, maybe that's the lens that he's coming from. We're not condoning his behavior. I want whoever wrote his tweet for him to be my speechwriter someday that was beautifully crafted. But the point is that he he's looking at it from his lens of being sort of beaten down in some ways. And yeah, he takes responsibility and says, I don't, you know, I'm making some bad choices and all of that. So that's his lens. Now, there's the other lens, which is the rest of the world that says you can't simply call the ATP corrupt. So at least he had the good sense or his management did to backtrack on that and try and take a little bit of the heat off. But it's a shame because he played some pretty spellbinding tennis against Steve Johnson, and this is now what we're talking about. I mean, in, in a way, I wish we, I mean, of course, we wish we didn't have to talk about this. Years ago, when he became a, a sensation by playing so well at the Australian Open, we were hoping that, that by now he would be buttoned up like some of the other players without losing, you know, some of the things that make him so charismatic. He's not been able to do that. This is who he is. This is what it seems like we're going to have on a go forward basis. We, Brett, how many times have we said it in commentary call in his matches? At least five times in Washington, D.C. We have to just sort of accept this, and yes, we have to talk about the bad stuff, but let's also give him credit for when the good stuff happens. But, James, yeah. I know he's, he's entertaining, and I know he appeals to the millennials with his attitude and all that stuff, but couldn't the argument be made that not only is there not a double standard when it comes to his behavior, he's actually given a pass. How about that thing in Washington, D.C., when he threw the water bottle against the chair umpire's chair? He didn't get dinged up for that. He, he, there are actually, if you go by the code of conduct and warning point game, 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 there are matches where he could have been defaulted, where he was still in there. Is that a valid argument? Yeah, I mean, I don't think it's either way. I think a double standard is sometimes earned. I think um, it's by your behavior, by your reputation, by what you've done before. And for me, it's tough to say it's a double standard when there isn't someone else to compare it to. Who else on tour has thrown a chair 
has called a, an umpire a bleeping tool, has spat at an umpire, has done those kind of things. You can't really compare it to someone else. Well, what, what was their fine? No one's done that. So if you want to say you've been punished harshly, you can agree there. But you can't say someone's done the exact same things. And some guys, you know, have gotten fined, have done something, but they've done it once, and then they've never had any sort of um, counter, you know, any uh, encounter again. And so, yeah, they, the fine's going to be different there. I think what Tsitsipas did the other day, uh, making a crass generalization towards an umpire, that was that was awful and disgusting. Yeah. I don't know what his punishment will be, but yeah, that could be that could be harsh. But does he have the same history? And with Nick Kyrgios, you've got a history of these things, so he's going to be punished harshly. And that's not necessarily a double standard. That's an earned reputation. Down the line, yes or no, should Nick Kyrgios be suspended, Jim? Um, I think probably. No. I say no. One yes, two no's. Oh. You can uh, uh, probably let, let us know <laughs> probably and two no's. Let us know what you think. Hit us on all the social media platforms at Tennis Channel and uh, let us know if you think that Nick should be suspended. He plays the French wild card Antoine Huang on grandstand tonight. Much more.